Hi, this is Eric Trembley. Welcome to my screencast about how to use Google's Picasso program. What I'd suggest you do if you haven't already is create yourself a Google account and that's free to do so go ahead and do that if you need to pause the video that's fine to do. When you come back to us you next thing you're going to do is to click on this little tile doohickey in the corner here and to find Picasso it's been a little bit buried under this new setup that Google has made. You hit more and then click even more from Google. If you scroll your computer down a little bit, you can see media. Under media, you'll find Picasa. This is a downloadable program, so what I would suggest you do is to go ahead and pause the video, download Picasa, and it's going to take you several minutes to go ahead and get this uploaded in, and get your pictures uploaded into it. I would recommend go ahead and doing that now, and I'll see you soon. Hi, welcome back. As you can see, I have created a, a, an album called The Alamo. This is based off of my recent trip to the ISTE conference in 2013. If you take a look, you can see all the pictures that I've put in here. And if you click on one in particular in your album, after you've uploaded things, you can do several things to it. There's, got, there's a whole lot of things you could do. If you have people with red eyes, you can repair that right away. You can straighten out the picture, you can crop it down to just the image that you want to get. I'm feeling lucky is one click for lighting and color, auto contrast, auto color. You could also edit in Creative Kit. This requires you to download a little bit more material to do that. You can retouch in text. If you click through these other tools, you can see quite a few other things that you can do as well. And you can save multiple versions of this as well. If I wanted to change this to a black and white up image, I could do that. If I want to make it look like a film grain. So quite a few different things I could do to edit this. All right, you can see some of the different options here. If I want to make it really neon, if I want to make it go back to the 1980s and go Polaroid, I can do it that way too. Once you've edited the things that you want to do, it's really easy to make, a, make yourself an album that you can put online. And you can set it to private where only people that you invite can look at this album and have access to it. You could either let them save to it as well, or you can go ahead and... Uh, just have them be able to look at the pictures within the album. This is especially nice if you got family far away or you're collaborating with colleagues across across a distance or students may be working on a project and one of the members might be absent so all the pictures for your project are saved under this one folder somewhere in this album. So what I can do with this is go ahead and create an album that I can share online. As you can see back on the title screen once again, if you click on these different options you can make it into a full screen slideshow. You can create a photo collage using these images. You could also make a movie presentation. You could save it to a disk on an external disk or some other source to save your, your material on. And you can this is where you can share your album. So you can limit this to whoever has the link at this point or you can allow it to be public if you really want to do that too. Some of the other tools that I thought were pretty interesting with this is it does have a facial recognition for program too. It is, does allow you to geotag, so if you want to put things where they took, where the pictures were taken, you can go ahead and tag it, and you could also upload this in conjunction with Google Earth as well. So this might be something for teachers to use as a, as a project. Some of the other things that this allows you to do is the is the as we said the facial recognition. And many people like to use this with Google+, Plus, which is the social networking tool. As you can see, here's a picture of me in front of the Alamo. If you click on, on View and click on People, this will give you a chance to tag peop, uh, people that are in the picture, especially you can see the faces here. Notice this one even zooms in on a stranger that's out in the crowd here. So kind of interesting way to do this. You could be able to view your pictures by the facial recognition feature as well in your document. One of the other features I've liked about this is the ability to, to upload and save videos as well to this program. Here's a picture of my little boy riding his bike for the, one of the first times. If you also take a look here, you can have the opportunity to play this full screen. You can create a new ending point or new starting point, And you could also save this as a photograph. You do this by taking a snapshot of it right here. Thank you for joining me today. Please check out my other Google